Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko, your host, every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. I hope you've been enjoying the gardening series and all the lovely competitions that we're running on that particular series. So keep um, looking out on our social media pages for fantastic prizes. And um, yeah, keep supporting the gardening series as well as the farming podcast. So today we're all we're talking about microgreens, um, growing microgreens that, and the benefits thereof. So if you have green fingers and particularly like microgreens to be specific, I think this show is for you. And we're joined by two amazing entrepreneurs from Happy Greens. They don't grow cannabis, just by the way, they grow microgreens. I know the name might sound a bit funny, but um, yeah, I hope that <laughs> In their production, you know, they definitely are happy farmers growing happy greens, as their name says it. So today we're joined by Ruan Oersthuizen and Tina Kraus, who are both co-founders of Happy Greens. And if you have any questions for both the gentlemen tonight, please feel free to ask and we could answer them directly live right here onto the show. Otherwise, keep commenting, liking and sharing uh, this farming podcast and uh, we love engagement. So anything that you have to say, we definitely take it quite seriously. And if there's any other topics that you would like us to talk about here on the farming podcast, please do throw your suggestions and follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube as well, and subscribe to our channel. Well, let's get straight into the show. Gentlemen, uh, Ruan, Tinas, thank you so much for coming onto the show. How are you doing? Hi, Mbali. Thanks for having us. Uh, Hi, Mbali. <laughs> we're doing yeah. fine. Uh, doing great. Thank you. Yes. Great. It's good to know. Well, you've got a very, very interesting background, right? <laughs> uh, it seems like you're in a container. I can definitely see some greens there. I can see some lead lighting. So tell us about Happy Greens. When did you start and how were you producing the Happy Greens? Well, uh, the concept, we got the idea from, I was like, we both were sick with COVID and obviously in bed with the phones. Mm -hmm. And I came across a video from a guy in the US that said, my side hustle for 2020, uh, growing microgreens as a business. And immediately I thought, this is so me. And I've, obviously I've got green thumbs and I just started running with it. And this is what we got today. And there's a vision and we're going forward with it. Right. And how did Ruan come on board? Because you're saying you saw that video, uh, Tinas. So how did Ruan come aboard? Ruan, do you have green fingers as well? Or did you just find the concept of growing microgreens quite interesting? Well, yeah, the concept of growing it is absolutely amazing. Um, the health benefits, um, everything that is um, constituted to microgreens is just amazing. So yeah. when he came up with the idea of it, um, I was on board immediately. Um, yeah. I don't have green finger fingers myself, but, um, you know, I help with all the other things like the admin and the finances and um keeping track of, uh, you social know, media. of our social media accounts. Yeah. All of that stuff, you know, <laughs> things I'm good at. I'll leave yeah. the plant to him. <laughs> right. So it sounds like Tinas is the farmer and you're pretty much the marketer, which is quite a good combination, you know, because you definitely need the two. So Tinas, um, from a production level, um, the backdrop that we're seeing, are you growing microgreens in that specific structure using lead lighting are you using soil or some form of growing medium? Maybe just take us through your actual production processes. Yeah, so your microgreens uh, is grown in a tray. Um, okay. Yeah, so this is your pea, pea microgreens. So that's the tray. So you'll weigh your seeds off. So each, each uh, variant's got a certain weights of seeds that you need to weigh off and your gray medium is cocoa peat yes. it's all sterile and uh so you'll you'll sow your seeds and then you will soak you first you'll soak your seeds sorry mm -hmm. you'll soak your seed for either four hours or eight hours 24 hours depending on the variant mm. 
then you'll sow, sow it on top of your cocoa peat and it will go un, under on the dark and then um, it will start sprouting for three to four days and then you'll put it under lights so your growing growing period is between 14 and 21 days depending on your variant mm. Okay. And, um, you know, we have some people thinking that because it's grown on cocoa peat, it's under lead lighting, um, it is organic, right? So um, are you using any form of pesticides? It's so, it looks like a very enclosed structure where uh, minimal pests come in. So how do you, does microgreens need to flower? Does it need bees? Um, you know, or do you need, you know, like a, a, an ecosystem of some pets um, pests to really make sure that the plant uh, grows well? So the environment it grows in is totally uh, isolated, mm. um, pesticide-free, um, so your t- it's all temperature controlled as well and humidity controlled. So mm. it grow at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and between uh, 30% and 60% humidity. Mm. So if your humidity is too <laughs> high, you, you look at getting mold and stuff. And um, so it's a very controlled area mm. that you need to grow it in. Yeah, it sounds quite technical. Like who assisted you with all this technical information, you know, um, in terms of the lighting, the degrees, the temperatures and so forth? Well, uh, Google, <laughs> Google search. <laughs> There's so much information on the internet. It's actually yeah. scary. We were watching YouTube videos for days on just soaking up all the information. And then we um, got funds together. We um, got our first trays, our first batches of seeds, um, mm. did our, built uh, the first part of the enclosure. And mm. when we did our first trial batch, um, it was just like, you know, this. It was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> we, we definitely need to continue with this. And we've been. And the joy you get out of it, planting those seeds and seeing it grow and sprout, mm. it's just amazing, an amazing view. Mm. So if you can share, gentlemen, like how big is this uh, enclosed structure that you've built, firstly? And number two, how dependent is it on light, really? You know, we have load shedding nowadays. So does one have to get like a backup generator, um, some solar system um, in place? And maybe how many, how many plants can one grow? I don't know if that's the right question because... Can, microgreens are quite small. So maybe there's like hundreds of thousands in that small uh, a, 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 a enclosure right. that you have there. So, um, yeah, how big is the structure Does, and how heavily reliant is it on electricity? And so, and also maybe h- how many seeds or plants are you growing? Um, what can one look at harvesting from a kilogram perspective in that structure? I know it's quite a number of questions, but I think you can answer it, you know, within a, uh, one sentence or two, yeah. So the structure we got up here, it's, it's, uh, it's a two by six meter structure. I've got um, three shelves. Okay. Uh, each shelf carry, carries um, 30 trays. Um, so out of out of these these thirty trays or sixty trays, I can get about eight kgs of uh, microgreens. So I plant. Uh, I would plant like in sequence mm. to harvest every Friday or delivery on every Friday. Oh wow, that's amazing! Fresh delivery every Friday. Fresh delivery every Friday. So it's quite an intensive workout there. Um, just <laughs> make sure that, you know, you've got happy greens growing and um, harvesting to and delivering to your clients. Is that the case? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. How much time do you spend in uh, your little farm uh, making sure that you're getting the right crop um, or the right microgreens at the end of the day once you harvest for your clients? Well, it's quite intense because you need to have a, you need to look at your temperature the, well, constantly, um, especially with weather changes. With weather changes, with all the rain we we having lately, uh, your humidity is quite high. 
So you use a dehumidifier to, to take all the all the um, moisture out of the air. Mm. Um, so yeah, electricity is a, plays a big part of it. Mm. Um, luckily for me, on on the one side of the, got a big window facing facing the sun side of the house, mm. so I get exposure to the sun as as well. Mm. Mm. So um, maybe for um, Ruan, what type of varieties are you growing? So I see the green, green plants there at the back, and I see some plants that are almost like purple in color, um, you know. And sometimes, is there a difference between herbs and microgreens? Because sometimes people think microgreens are herbs. So maybe just educate us a little bit on the difference between the two and um what type of varieties of microgreens are you growing there? Now, we've gotten a lot of references before where um, people confuse herbs with microgreens. Now, with microgreens, um, it's an actual vegetable. So our variants that we're growing here, um, we have sunflowers, um, broccoli, um, bok choy, which is a Chinese salad. Um, our purple one that you were referencing is a radish. It's got a nice, spiky, spicy taste. Um, it's very, um, as well with our mustard, um, it's got a very intense uh, must taste, taste to it. Yeah. Um, very delicious. And then um, other than that, we've got the pea shoots and um, rocket. Rocket, which is the um, arugula variant of the lettuce. And this week we're going to grow um, or test um, onions to, um, yeah. So every time we get a new um, variant that we want to try out, if it's a success, then we add it to the production line. And then it gets added because we um, produce um, two uh, weights. Of, it's a 150 gram and a 75 gram tub. That's available um, at um, Green Grocers. It's apple tree and um, spas. and our local spas here. Mm. They um, and in the tub is a mix of all the variants. Mm. Mm. So tell me, um, Tina, when you started growing, right? So I, I suppose, like you said, you saw this man's video. It was a side hustle that he started, and you decided, let me start as well. So once you started and you saw the stuff growing, you know, at, at what stage did you decide then to say, let me just take this to market? Or were you just consuming the microgreens uh, uh, for your own personal consumption? Well, the first time we grew it and we, we actually tasted it, we were wowed by the taste of it. Mm. And, and the boost that you get, it's such a, um, it's like drinking an energy drink without <laughs> the negative uh, health you know, after effects that you get from an energy drink, it's just, it just gives you that feeling, that perk, yeah, yeah, that perk that you, that you want. And it's good for the stomach as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So apologies for, um, you know, my question here, but how do people consume eat microgreens, right? Because my interaction with microgreens is literally seeing them on a plate, you know, as the chef has sprinkled something just as, as a form of decoration. But you mentioned that you're selling it to like Apple Tree and um, the local retailer as well. How are you selling it? Like, I, I think you mentioned in tubs, right? So do people buy microgreens literally in tubs? And then how does one eat it? Because my perception of microgreens is that they've purely used as a form of decoration on a plate. Well, it's microgreens are so convenient because um, mm -hmm. you can take out a, a little bit of it and just put it on a sandwich, or you can make smoothies out of it. Oh. Add them to your salads. Your salads, um, chop them up. You can add them basically to any any meal. Breakfast meals, eggs, the possibilities of endless. <laughs> we, we take all our excess microgreens um, and we slice them up, um, add juice. some, juice them up with um, juice, um, fruit, fruit, and some ice. And then we make a whole batch of uh, microgreen smoothies that we just um, batch up and we freeze. And then every time with a meal, we'll have a microgreen smoothie, which is like this. Energy, energy drink. 
Oh, wow. This is fantastic. So with your clients, I mean, are you, are you selling it under the brand of Happy Greens? And also take us through those conversations that you started having with clients. Was it quite easy to get to market? Um, or were they saying, geez, we've been waiting for a microgreens customer? Um, so just take us through that journey of the branding process and obviously speaking to, to your clients um, for them to buy your microgreens. Well, at first, um, not everybody is familiar with microgreens. So mm -hmm. I need to, to, to people, you get your sprouts and then you get your baby leaves. Mm -hmm. So microgreens are the one in between sprouts and baby greens. And those microgreens are 40%, 40 times, as 40 times more nutrients than its adult counterpart. Mm. That's the whole benefits of microgreens. So mm. just imagine one cup of broccoli microgreens, you have to eat 40 cups of the adult broccoli heads compared to the one cup of microgreens, same amount of nutrients out of it. Mm. That mm. makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the, your clients just started saying, okay, like, did, you, did you have to make a few harvests and show them the samples of your microgreens? And um, how was that reception like? Well, uh, our packaging are quite unique. When you, when you open, open the tub, it's like a little garden of microgreens, all the, all the different uh, variants and and uh, we actually grew popcorn for the first time. Um, and that's yeah. quite interesting. Uh, inter interesting inter crop. Uh, <laughs> so it's all yellow. Um, people can go onto our Facebook page or Instagram to, to see what it looks like. It's mm -hmm. quite unique. So we, we basically started with um, private customers, you know, people we knew, um, people we knew um, who were health conscious and, you know, um, approaching them with the idea, giving them samples. Um, from there on, we approached um, local retailers um, to, um, you know, telling them about the health benefits and giving them some of our um, private clients' um, references. Um, we're now on four green grocers that we supply to every week. So wow. it's so convenient. You can just pop in, grab a tub and got all the nutrients that you need right there. And our main aim is not really to, you know, create this empire. It's really to sell the idea of being healthy and selling this to um, a market where people need extraordinary um, nutrition, okay. where, you know, people suffering with ailments and illnesses mm -hmm. and stuff like that, you know, people who probably... Um, on strong medications, you know, stuff like that messes with your digestive system. And there mm -hmm. are so many health benefits, so many, um, they contain so many minerals mm -hmm. and, um, you know, acids and all of that stuff. Um, we've got lists, all, all, all the um, variants on our social media pages, we've got all the variants listed and all their health benefits. So you guys mm -hmm. need to check it out there. Yeah, I'd like you to just bring on those health benefits. But before you do so, I just want to find out what are some of the challenges that you guys have experienced in growing microgreens? So, for example, I know you mentioned that it's quite intensive. You have to check the temperatures quite often. Um, is, is, is cold chain also another challenge? Is, uh, you know, getting the crop rotation cycles another challenge? So maybe just take us through some of the, the, the challenges or um, obstacles that you've had to undergo and, and obviously uh, surpass once, once you started or when you started Happy Green, specifically where production is concerned. Well, I think the biggest challenge thus far was uh, um, getting, trying to get the humidity down to, to what it's supposed to be, uh, between 30 and 60%. Um, otherwise, no other major hassles, um, or yeah, you know, that, that's it. It's really easy to grow. Yeah. Um, hygiene is obviously a big, big, big factor. So everything must be hygiene, uh, hygiene, 
and you need to sanitize your trays because yes. you reuse your trays every time. Yes. Um, so it needs to be washed and sanitized and then all of that. Yeah, yeah. So, Ruan, what are those health benefits, you know? Um, are they best for people who are diabetic, have cancer? Just take us through the health benefits of having microgreens in our diet. Well, since you pointed out the radish, which is our most, our prettiest microgreen here with the purple. Um, Can I bring one closer? Yeah, bring one closer. Um, I've got a whole list here. Um, the radish microgreen in particular, um, it's an anti-cancer food, high glucosinolate concentration of microgreens, especially radish microgreens, makes it more suitable anti-cancer foods as compared to bro broccoli. It's got weight loss effects, benefits for the skin. Um, radish microgreens also contains an antioxidant rich component, mm. like a high concentration of polyphenols causes causing help to reduce Alzheimer's disease risks. And then also microgreens helps in diabetes. The antioxidant present in microgreens, in radish microgreens, helps to reduce the stress that can prevent sugar from properly entering the cells. Research studies show that radish microgreens increases the glucose uptake up to 25%, thus helping reducing diabetes. So. We've got all of this listed on our social media pages for every single variant, but um, mostly this would be concentrated on a market for people who have, I won't say severe illnesses, but mainly health concerns to severe, severe Ill illnesses. Um, yeah. We are living in a time where you know people want to be more health conscious. They want to be more conscious of what they put into their bodies, especially now with COVID and, you know, people taking vaccines, you know, people are being conscious of what's going into their bodies. Mm. Um, and I think starting with food and starting to educate people on this particular food, because it's been around in, in Asia for thousands of years. Um, we've only now only picked it up on the Western side, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's actually not really a brand new thing. But yeah. um, it just, I think it's never been commercialized as mm. big as, you know, your fully grown vegetables because it is such a labor intensive um, oh, pro process, um, you know, to get it to this stage to actually mm. um, harvest, pack and, you know, mm -hmm. supply it to a, to a supplier and to a green grocer, you know, to get to that point, you know, back in those days, you know, setting up a factory to do that was just, you know, mm -hmm. not, it was out of the question, but, you know, with advanced technologies today, what we've done in here, we can just multiply by 10 or a hundred in a warehouse situation. Um, and boom, you know, we can supply the entire country if we want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sounds so amazing. And I mean, when I think about the landscape of South Africa is that we're such a cash crop society you know, where the most important uh, or the most in-demand crops are your cabbages, your tomatoes, your potatoes, your onions and carrots, you know, because that's what a lot of people consume. And you are quite right, Ruan, to say, yeah, it, it, it's microgreens aren't so popular. You know, it's typically seen as an affluent or niche, or niche crop where you'd literally just find them in restaurants and not usually your green grocers. Share some experiences with us or the feedback that you've had with the private clients that you've sold to, you know, what have they said about happy greens and have they come to you and say, please train us so that I could grow these at, at my own, at the comfort of my own garden or in my own home. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we, actually, we had customers coming to us. We, we want to grow this because they're far away from us. And we, we only deliver uh, Johannesburg and Victoria at this stage. Yeah. Um, so I've got friends in St. Lucia and oh, Petsenburg wow. Bay. And my parents in, in Nelspray. In Nelspray, yeah. too. My dad's also growing. He's, we, he ordered stuff from Joburg, which we shipped down for him. Um, so he's also now experimenting with it because we, we shipped some um, of the actual microgreens yeah. to them on a 
basis because my mom loves it. So, but so, now he wants to grow it for her. So, so everyone is. Into so we got it. people addicted to microgreens now. <laughs> Fantastic! Getting everybody to eat microgreens. Tell us about the future plans for Happy Greens. I mean, um, I'm sure there are those customers that could say, "Happy Greens, p- please build this structure for myself in my own home and teach me how to farm it." So. Um, are there any prospects of maybe franchising this uh, this concept that you've started and making it quite popular, or just w- where do you see yourself in the next year, maybe? Well, I've got a vision. Next next year, this time, we want to do a thousand trays, and <laughs> my five year vision, uh, our five year vision is to have a warehouse um, mm. with. Uh, Yes, to yeah, supply, and supply most nationwide. Of, yeah, nationwide. Mm. And uh, that's our vision. And obviously, empowering uh, people in the country and mm. getting them to grow as well. Every household should actually be growing microgreens. Mm. And it's mm. a of their diet. Mm. Just like people grow herbs as, you know, yes. something that people have a tiny little herb garden, you know, um, teach people to have a tiny little microgreens garden as well because, you know, there's nothing as better than a fresh cut batch of greens that you just add to whatever dish you just um, put together. Um, it just adds that extra touch flavor and touch, extra yeah. and you feel great afterwards. And it's really can't explain the, um, the feelings <laughs> of <laughs> you know, the feelings you get from when you eat you know, it's, it's, yeah, the taste is very, 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 very uh, unique. unique. <laughs> it's very unique. It's very <laughs> pungent. It's very um, uh, spicy. Um, but the the feeling you get off to it, you know, it's like you've just eaten something really healthy, but it wasn't, how can I say it, disgusting. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. You sometimes health food isn't really nice, but it makes you feel good. Where this tastes really delicious and it makes you feel good as well right so it's quite easy on the taste buds there and you know people could just use it in their daily diet so gentlemen thank you so much for such an informative conversation around microgreens i definitely see you guys blowing up because it seems like it's such a nice and neat structure you've you've grasped the concept of growing microgreens and already selling to retail. So they trust you enough. So tell me um, any shout outs that you want to make? Uh, maybe, you know, thanking those uh, customers that bought from you in the early stages and um, where could people find happy greens? Yes. Um, yeah. I just want to sh- give a shout out to uh, Broughton uh, from BAC Logistics who has supported us in our journey. So, so, so far. And um, Marius from uh, uh, Absolute, Absolute Water, Water. We sponsored yes. our, um, it's Marius and Kaylin, yeah, sponsored you. our um, water purification system yes, oh, oh. that we use for the watering of the microgreens because we you know there's a lot of um, heavy metals and stuff. Although mm. uh, the water here in Ekurileni is at a high standard. Um, mm. You know, we're on the safe side with a reverse osmosis water mm. <laughs> system. Yeah. So, yeah, you can, you can find uh, Happy Greens um, in Apple Trees, Edenvale, and Alberton. It's also available at Super Spa, Cora Glen, and Mayer's Doll. And um, you can order privately from us. Um, just send us an email at happy.greens at app.com. Or you can find us on Instagram or Facebook, um, Happy Greens Urban Farm. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tinas and Ruan, for joining on, t- uh, for coming on to the show. Um, yeah, happy farming. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Awesome. That was Ruan and Tinas from both co-founders of Happy Greens, where we spoke about microgreens and the benefits thereof. Um, towards the end of the conversation, you could definitely catch um, their products in those specific retail stores, and you could order directly um, 
directly to Happy Greens uh, online. So reach out to them via email and follow them on their social media pages, which I will definitely do so because I think the concept in which they're using to grow the microgreens is quite interesting. And so, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the show tonight. Short and sweet and quite precise. And yeah, I hope you got enough information maybe to start your own microgreens. Contact the gents and uh, maybe you could be trained by them as well, but keep supporting their business as well. And yeah, if you have any questions, comments, this particular video will be on our YouTube channel under the Farming Podcast playlist in the Private Property YouTube channel. So be sure to catch this episode. Reach out to either Ruan or Tinas. If you have any other questions that we didn't cover onto the show regarding microgreens and yeah, happy farming and have a fantastic Thursday evening, as well as a lovely weekend ahead. That's it from Private Property, the Farming Podcast. See you next week, Tuesday. Take care.